Nashville, Tennessee may be the home to country music, but this week I'd like to suggest it's also a good example as to why the pickup truck is the best selling vehicle in North America. Because down here, like the Canadian West, these are working man trucks. These men and women wouldn't be caught dead driving down Fifth Avenue or Young Street. You know, for over 30 years, the Ford F-Series has been number one in a classic battle year to year with the Chevy Silverado. But the good old boys, they better check out the rear view mirror because closing in fast, Chrysler, who want a big piece of this action. So this week, we're gonna check out the new and improved Ram. Not Dodge Ram, just Ram. It's a statement about Ram pickup trucks, and really we wanted to keep the integrity of that design true. I think just looking at the truck, um, the styling of the Ram sets it apart from all the competition. choice of powertrains in the vehicle from our new very fuel efficient, best in class fuel economy, 3.6 liter, when paired with the 8-speed transmission, to the Hemi, the legendary Hemi. Um, it's what every guy would want in his truck if he had a choice. They're definitely increasing share year after year after year. A lot of that has to do with design. It's a fantastic design, great new interiors. But the, the underlying engines are really starting to make an impression on the buyers. The Pentastar 3.6 liter mated to the 8-speed transmission gets you best in class fuel economy with 7.8 liters per 100 or 36 miles per gallon Imperial. Also, from a horsepower standpoint, it delivers 305 horsepower, which based on the competitive set is extremely competitive and beats out the competition on their base V6s. I think the big story with this Ram is the Pentastar engine, but more importantly, the eight-speed transmission that it's linked to, because they've created a fuel economy from the tranny. So this is something you don't need to do anything fancy with the engine. You're adding gears and assuming that that transmission is good, uh, it's, it's a huge gain for a very good technological bent. Now like the Grand Cherokee, the new Ram comes with four corner air suspension. It has four different settings. You can operate it either from the dash or with the key fob. It has a normal position, two off road positions, as well as a park position, which actually lowers the truck by two inches, which makes it real easy getting in and out of the cabin as well as accessing the bed. That's the other thing we have to get used to. It's just the Ram and they're trying to differentiate Dodge for cars and Ram is strictly for trucks, but I still trip up on that. Well, we separated the brands, uh, give each its own identity. I think it's really worked well. I mean, Ram is our pickup brand, no confusion. It's not part of the minivan family, the car family, the crossover family. It is its own vehicle and it needed its own brand and it's worked very well for us. From an exterior standpoint, very capable, new wheel lineup, LED tail lamps, projector headlamps, new fog lamps. So really, we've taken the exterior and really enhanced it quite a bit. Now this may be a manly man's truck, but inside you've got the creature comforts of any luxury vehicle. Although you've still got those practical items a working man can use. Now it does come with an optional display screen, which is kind of cool. It's a touch screen. I find that's distracting when you're driving. And if you're wearing gloves, it's a pain you know where. So Chrysler's thought of everything and you've got backup manual knobs. Now they've also got something called a rotary knob shift. I know it saves space. Personally, I don't like it. When I shift gears, I want to feel it. It's such a big segment, uh, 260,000 sales a year just in Canada. An awful lot of different needs of all those buyers, um, whether 4x2, 4x4, whether they want a reg cab, a quad cab, or a crew cab, um, the different bed length configurations, 12 different models. We need to have that many different choices for all the different types of buyers and the different uses that they use their trucks for. When it comes to the big three, are pickup trucks the bread and butter? Uh, it's, as I say, second largest segment in Canada, um, so it's very important to us. Um, certainly hybrids have their place, um, but when it comes to selling volume in Canada, you need to have a competitive pickup truck if you're going to compete as an uh, automotive company. I think people should really watch Ram because the brand is definitely up and coming 
and uh, it'll be interesting to see as they pull neck and neck with Ford where that goes in the next couple of years. Well, they're not going to carry on the way they are, I'll make that perfectly clear. And they are going to change, we are changing already. We're not happy with our sales results right now. Um, so we're prepared to spend the money with our dealers and promote the brand of Suzuki with the intention of getting our sales uh, increased for sure. There's no question about that. Looks okay from here, but who can tell? More later on Kenzie's Corner. is a company undergoing transition. On this edition of Test Drive, the first fruit of that labor. This is the all new ILX. The ILX is entering what is rapidly becoming an emerging segment one that is likely to grow if the cost of gas continues to rise. There are many potential purchasers that want luxury, but also want to tone down the cost of operation. Now, ultimately, this involves downsizing. The ILX, along with the likes of the Buick Verano, is designed to cater to this change in taste. An Acura wouldn't be an Acura unless it was loaded with amenities, and this ILX is no exception, especially if you go with the technology model. When you do that, 360 watt sound system, navigation system, heated leather seats, power moonroof, and a noise cancellation system that actually helps to keep the cabin quiet. The one thing, however, that struck me most, the number of buttons on the steering wheel. Believe it or not, 16 functions, plus the paddle shifters and the horn, and that doesn't count the fact that you've got to steer with the steering wheel. If you've got a button fetish, you've got a fan. The base Acura ILX is powered by a 2.0-litre four-cylinder that puts out 150 horsepower and 140 pound-feet of torque at 4,300 RPM. As with Honda's other engines, this one is as sweet as a nut. It revs freely and it does not get noisy in the process. It is paired with a 5-speed automatic transmission that features a manual mode and paddle shifters. The hitch is that it could do with a 6-speed, one that would drop the rev rate on the highway while allowing closer ratios for first through fourth gears. The good news is, well, functionally, it's better than the CVT and the ILX hybrid. If the 2.0-litre engine isn't quite enough for you, there's always the larger 2.4-litre. They essentially lifted it right out of the Civic Si and dropped it under the hood of the ILX. It really does amp up performance, but there is a slight hitch. You cannot get a manual transmission with the 2.0-litre engine. You cannot get an automatic with the larger 2.4-litre engine. Both engines demand both transmission choices. I hope Acura gets the message soon. When it comes to the handling side, the ILX is very nicely balanced. It delivers the ride comfort demanded of an entry-level luxury car without sacrificing the handling characteristics. The amount of body roll is minimal, yet it takes a pretty gnarly piece of road to upset the ride composure. It's a well-sorted setup that caters very well to divergent needs. The back seat of this ILX is very spacious and will accommodate two adults quite comfortably. A third is out of the question because of the very domed nature of the middle spot. Now, when you get to the back end here, you'll find a nice roomy trunk. 12.4 cubic feet of cargo space, and you get a fold-down rear seat. You'll also find a backup camera and a true release for the deck lid, thank you very much. The disappointment, these hockey stick style hinges, they will crush anything placed beneath them. Now, if the ILX is on your shopping list, there is an important consideration. The base car comes with 205-55R16 tires. Now, they pale in comparison to the 215 45R17s that arrived with the premium package. When equipped with the lower, wider profile tyres, the ILX displays much less understeer and the response to steering input is faster and certainly crisper to the feel. On that note, the steering could do with a tad less assist. 
While it's not vague by any means, a little more weight in the feel would make the ILX feel so much sportier. If this is a harbinger of things to come, Acura's future looks a lot brighter than it did six months ago. This car is comfortable, it handles nicely, a loaded interior, and it's got a good balance between power and performance, especially if you go with the larger 2.4 litre engine. All in all, not much to complain about other than the fact that Acura needs to rethink those transmission choices. They used to call them Econo boxes, and you can see why. The vehicles were cheap, and when it came to styling, well, that was an afterthought, if anybody thought about it at all. But as we've said before, high fuel prices have forced many consumers to look at smaller vehicles, and many car makers have responded by giving us some newly styled vehicles that we'd normally find in Europe. Well, General Motors says it now wants a piece of that small car pie, and so they're taking dead aim at the Scion IQ and the Fiat 500, and the car they're doing it with is called the Spark. It's the first time we have a player in the mini segments. It's a segment that's actually exploding right now. It's on track to double its sales, its retail sales year over year. And uh, there's a lot of good players in that segment, you know, namely the new Fiat 500. There's also the Scion IQ. And we thought, you know, we needed an offering as well to compete against those players. It wasn't that long ago that General Motors introduced the Sonic, which they described as a small car. Now we have the introduction of the Spark, which is also a small car. I'm confused. The Spark is a very different vehicle. Uh, we developed the Spark uh, primarily for, uh, for people who live in major city. And Spark is much smaller than the Sonic. It's about 14 inches shorter. And it's, it's designed to be like very easy to park, easy on gas. The North American Spark is not new. Uh, we introduced the, uh, the Spark to the North American market as a 2013 model. This is actually the third model year in our product life cycle. It has been proven very successful in more than 80 countries around the world in the last two model years. We have already sold more than 600,000 units of Spark around the world. The standard powertrain and the only powertrain on the Spark is the 1.2 liter engine, uh, double overhead camshafts. To meet the North American customer's requirement for a little bit more horsepower, we have increased the standard powertrain, uh, standard engine displacement from 1.2 to 1.25. What that does is it improves the, uh, the mid-range torque without sacrificing the, uh, the fuel economy. It is designed as an urban car, but it is also very comfortable on the highway. And of course, in, in the city, uh, it is just nothing compares to that in terms of maneuverability. It has very tight turning radius of only five meters of turning radius. You can turn on a dime and, and squeeze in in, uh, in some very tight parking spots. You know, the Spark comes with some technology you don't normally find in this segment. It's called Hill Hold Assist. What it means is if you're driving the five-speed manual, you're on a hill, the light's red, and a guy's right on your bumper, right? You're worried that as soon as you take your foot off the brake, you're going to roll back and hit him. Well, with this technology, when you do take your foot off the brake, the car will hold its position for a couple of seconds, plenty of time to release the clutch, and drive away safely. If I was to sum up Spark, you know, in two words, I'd probably say it's a no compromise car. You know, you get it all. It's a great package. You know, it fits your lifestyle and it's a car that uh, will offer you all the connectivity features that you need, that you want, obviously, and no compromise on safety as well with the 10 standard airbags. So it's not because you choose to drive a smaller car that you need to sacrifice on anything. Should the competition be worried? Oh, absolutely. They should be worried in every single segment where we play. Now, since the Spark is directed towards young people, it comes with a sort of technology you'd expect to keep them connected like MyLink. However, for yours truly, when I'm driving, my cell phone is off, period. But I do like the Spark. I really love the selection of colors. We were driving the color known as Jalapeno Green. 
great styling, terrific turning radius, and heck, you've even got enough room to put your stuff. And this spark has something a lot of vehicles don't have in this segment. We call it the head turning factor, as in, nice car. We're going to get the opportunity to spend some time with the spark as it's heading to the motoring long-term garage. Over the next few months, we'll let you know how the relationship is proceeding. CSCS started 10 years ago uh, as a sport compact drag racing series. Uh, since then, we've grown to include a, a car show, a time attack competition, and a drifting competition. On a good day, uh, such as our season opener last year, we had just uh, under 6,000 people. We find that a lot of people who aren't even more sports enthusiasts will come out to the events, uh, and the reason being is there's a little bit for everybody. I think that there's enough of them out there now and enough satisfied customers that I think that they've sort of overcome the, the, the stigma that was attached to them and now they've got a great looking product which also really helps because it's just as easy to build an ugly car as it is to build a good one and this one's one of the best looking ones yet. The Motoring Tip of the Week is brought to you by Walmart for everyday low prices on Pennzoil, conventional and synthetic oils. Our motoring tip of the week concerns winter prepping your vehicle. Now we all know winter driving conditions can change radically day to day and from region to region of this country. You need to be prepared for the worst. One of the first areas you want to look at is your tires. There's many vehicles sold today where the tires are appropriate for three seasons but totally inappropriate for the winter. If you have one of those vehicles you need to get some advice from the tire pros and replace with four winter tires. But if you have any ongoing problems with your vehicle, for example, one or more leaking tires, bring it in here, get a rim leak repair done, they'll reseal the rim, put a new valve, and you won't have to be at the tire pump every week filling up those tires or driving on an underinflated tire, which we all know is unsafe. Make sure you've got good wiper blades, a winter blanket, a winter safety kit, your freeze protection of your cooling system is up to spec, you've got a good snow brush at hand, and you're prepared for winter driving. That's your motoring tip of the week. You know, it's no secret that life these days for Suzuki is not exactly a bowl of cherries. The company is not on people's shopping list. This despite the fact that just a few years ago they introduced the Kasashi, and I wasn't alone when I said this was one terrific vehicle. The challenge for this company, though, is to get you, the consumer, into the driver's seat. Gonna put on that dead pedal, drive like store. Let's give her this guy. Anytime that you have a racetrack where the sun is shining, unlimited tires and fuel, and a bunch of sports cars and a lot of hot-headed individuals, you end up with a bunch of smiles and a lot of high fives. And that's exactly what we've been seeing throughout the course of the day. It's definitely one thing to, to read about a product online and listen to reviews, uh, different documentaries. It's a great way to gather information. But from a driving dynamics, uh, the perspective can only come from behind the wheel. In a venue like this, uh, we can make a very safe environment versus the test drive in the street, hoping not to be worried about traffic, taking your mind off worrying about the stoplights or people walking in front of you. Here it's wide open. They can just concentrate on the fun of driving the car. We're not happy with our sales results right now. You know, the automotive industry in the last three or four years went through tremendous turmoil. We had our issues as well. Our volume is down a little bit. Uh, we have to get that going, moving forward, and uh, we are getting it going. The last few months have been much better than the months before. Uh, our target is much larger than it was last year, so events like this, we're sponsoring. I don't know how many other manufacturers do this at the dealer level. Um, so we're prepared to spend the money with our dealers and promote the brand of Suzuki with the intention of getting our sales uh, increased for sure. There's no question about that. You can see behind us, we have an autocross section going on with hard, hard ABS braking, the on and off the gas put in the transmission through the paces, putting the cars right to the limit, and uh, we've had zero failures so far as well. And that's always a good testament to the way uh, that a car is designed. Yeah! Awesome! How was that? Oh man, that was awesome. Tell me about it. That was awesome. I think I own one of these cars. I love it. I want to take my car out there. Maybe not have him drive, <laughs> but it was awesome. 
I, I like the car. Yeah, yeah, very, very much. It's uh, it's a shame that more people don't know about it, and, and hopefully events like this will get it on the radar of other uh, of, of shoppers. <laughs> Closed captioning for Motoring 2013 is brought to you by Greener, Fuel Efficient, Global. This is Chevrolet Now, driving our world forward. Have you had a flat tire recently? Chances are no. Tires are better than they've ever been. And some cars, particularly in the States by law, have tire pressure monitoring systems. Now, we don't have that mandatory in Canada yet, but there's a good chance your new car might have one. Because it's a problem. You got a flat tire, what are you going to do? You going to go to the local self-serve? Are they going to have a tire pump? Probably not. They're getting increasingly hard to find. And if you do find one, they want a buck. They want a, who's got a loony? Maybe you don't have a loony. Maybe the attendant will fire the pump up for you. Maybe he won't it could be stuck. Now the answer, first of all, you should have a tire pressure gauge. You should check the pressure on your tires at least once a week. I know Bill Gardner tells you about that all the time. And you should probably carry a little compressor plugs into your cigarette lighter. I know it saved my life a whole bunch of times. Why is this a problem? Well, Brad had a test car the other day. He had two flat tires, one spare. That's a problem. I'm Jim Kent. It's hard to believe that it was only in 2008 that this company had run out of inventory for all the wrong reasons. Plants were closing and they were writing the obituary for Chrysler. Well, since then, at least this Ram has been selling in record numbers. And you know, the new Ram, it is ready to play with the big boys. And speaking of them, up next, new trucks from both Ford and GM. As a result, we have ourselves a three horse race to see who's gonna be number one in North America. Before we go, make sure you check us out at MotoringTV.com and join us on Facebook. Get in on the conversation for the total motoring experience. That's it for now. We'll see you next time out as we continue to bring you more stories about cars and the people who drive them. He's 12, but he's been racing for seven years, and for five years he's raced three cars. So you could say he's got 21 years of experience. He takes things in really well. He absorbs stuff. And, uh, you know, he's, he's made his mistakes, and, and he's... Uh, taking his lumps and uh, you know I think he's, he's gaining some respect around here and uh, I think he's having a good time with it. I have a bundle of nerves from the time he goes out there. I just want him to do well. I mean a win is nice but um, I just like him to do well out there and, and to learn something.